Part 1 Beginnings, A Childhood in Cheshire John Frederick Kensett was born in 1816 in Cheshire, Connecticut, to Thomas Kensett and Elizabeth Atwater Daggett. He was one of five children and was the second son. His father immigrated from England, where he had been an apprenticed engraver. His mother was the daughter of a tailor and the granddaughter of a Yale College professor and ordained Presbyterian minister. At the time of Kensett's birth, his father was an engraver with a business in Cheshire. He and Charles Shelton opened Shelton and Kensett and ran the printing and engraving business there between 1812 and 1817. They created maps, engravings, and children's books and may have employed local women to hand color these products. The two men owned considerable land both in Cheshire and in Waterbury. The Kensett home stood next to the Burridge Beach House on South Main Street. The area looks like this today. Between 1821 and 1822, the Kensett children attended the Episcopal Academy, known today as Cheshire Academy. They also could have attended the local public school, which stood behind today's Cheshire Town Hall, and whose headmaster in 1825 was Bronson Alcott. Young Kensett showed an early talent in art. Years later, when reminiscing about her brother, Sarah Kensett Kellogg recounted that their father had predicted that John would become a renowned artist. In 1820, Cheshire was a rural area with fields as far as the eye could see. In fact, it is said that one could see the Sleeping Giant Mountain from South Main Street in town. In his youth, Kensett had an opportunity to revel in the natural beauty of the town, the pastures, the fields, the hills, and Roaring Brook Waterfall. In New Haven, he could enjoy the coast, as well as East and West Rock. Could these local views have influenced him in his later artistic endeavors? Part 2, An Engraving Apprentice in New Haven. John Kensett's maternal family, the Daggetts, had lived on York Street in New Haven for three generations, since the 1750s when his great-grandfather, Naphtali Daggett, became professor of divinity at Yale College. In 1829, when John Kensett was just 13 years old, his father died and young Kensett was sent to work in New Haven as an apprentice in his uncle's engraving business. Alfred Daggett, Kensett's uncle, conducted his engraving business from the Glebe Building at the southwest corner of Church and Chapel Streets. In New Haven, Kensett met his lifelong friend Thomas Rossiter, who was apprenticed to another local engraver and artist. This view of the New Haven Green is how both boys would have seen it at the time. Part 3, a banknote engraver in New York and Albany. Between 1829 and 1839, Kensett worked as a banknote engraver, first in New Haven for his uncle, then after they had a falling out in New York City and in Albany, New York. Engraving was a very detailed, exacting art, using a metal burin to cut lines into a metal sheet. This ultimately created a very precise image that could be printed multiple times. In letters from his friend John Casselier, also an engraving apprentice, it is clear that he found the work very tedious. Both young men dreamed of picking up brushes instead and painting. Perhaps the falling out with his uncle was over this very issue. 
Part 4, The Art Student in London, Paris, and Rome. Kensett and his aspiring artist friends, John Casselier and Thomas Rossiter, joined Asher B. Durand, an established artist, and they traveled to Europe together. They sailed in June 1840 on the steamship called the British Queen. She was a side wheel steamer that traveled between New York and London. The largest steamship of her day, she carried 200 passengers and took a fortnight to cross the Atlantic. While his friends traveled onward to Paris, Kensett stayed in London to meet his father's family. He made good use of his visit, sketching continually. In 1841, Kensett finally joined Rossiter in Paris, where they shared a studio on the Rue Université. Together with other American students, they took classes at art schools, copied master paintings at the Louvre, and traveled beyond Paris, gathering original material. This group of friends worked long, hard hours, as they would describe in their letters. However, they found time to meet with other artists and to critique each other's work. These were support groups in both the spiritual and monetary sense. They helped each other financially so that they could all continue their art endeavors. These early friendships were crucial to their lifelong sustainability as artists. They also met writers and editors who were traveling in Europe as well as wealthy Americans who purchased their finished work, perhaps as mementos of their own European sojourns. In 1843, Kensett had to return to England to take care of legal matters concerning his grandmother's death. While there, he took several painting excursions to Richmond, Windsor, and Hampton Court. In London, Kensett had access to the National Gallery, where he likely saw paintings by Claude Lorraine, John Constable, and J.M.W. Turner. He sent several finished paintings home to his family in New York, but he continued engraving to pay his bills. In 1845, Kensett, with his new friend, fellow artist, Benjamin Champney, completed a tour from Paris to Rome. Traveling by stagecoach, boat, and on foot, they crossed France, sailed down the Rhine, and crossed the Alps, sketching all the way. The trip was arduous, and it took a toll on Kensett, so that when he arrived in Rome, he was very ill. He stayed with the artist Thomas Hicks, who had a studio on the Via Marguta near the Spanish Steps. Remaining in Rome until 1847, Kensett met many artists and writers, some living there and others just passing through on tour. These artists met at each other's studios or at the Café Greco just across the street. Kensett painted with friends in the Roman Campania and traveled to Naples and Pastum in the south and to Florence and Venice in the north. Part 5, A New York Artist's Year. In 1847, at the age of 30, Kensett, along with some of his artist friends, returned home to New York City. They set up studios down in the area around New York University. Every few years, they returned to Europe, traveling together or alone. Kensett returned to Europe two more times to gather ideas for some of his most beautiful paintings, whether in America or Europe, an artist's year was divided into two parts. Summer was for traveling, 
to gather ideas and to create cartoons and studies on heavy paper and canvas. Cartoons, in artists' terms, are color studies. In those days, before the advent of any other recording devices, an artist only had his eyes to capture all the colors and images essential to completing the final painting later in the studio. This image is a sketch by Kensett of Niagara Falls and is part of the Cheshire Historical Society's collection. The Historical Society building, the Hitchcock Phillips House, circa 1785, is just a short walk from Kensett's birthplace and located on the historic Cheshire Green. Spending winters in New York was crucial for financial stability. On Saturday afternoons, the artists opened their studios to the public for the important task of exhibiting and selling their paintings. They also spent these months working on new paintings from the studies that they had recorded in the summer months. They networked and socialized. They connected with gallery owners. They attended meetings at the National Academy of Design and met with each other at places like Delmonico's Restaurant and at various clubs. Kensett's last studio was in the 21st Street YMCA, which was built across the street from the National Academy of Design. The top floor of the building was specifically designed with living and studio space for artists. Kensett was elected a full member to the National Academy of Design in 1849. He was one of the first 100 members of the Century Association, a club dedicated to promoting the arts, and a member of its exclusive sketch club. Kensett became a member of the Union League, a club established in 1862 to support the Union cause, President Lincoln, and the war effort. Through the League, he became involved with the art exhibit of the Metropolitan Fair in 1864, raising money for medical care for Union soldiers. League members included businessmen, writers, and artists. Some of these members banded together in 1871 to establish a Museum of Art in New York City. In this way, Kensett became one of the original founders of today's Metropolitan Museum of Art. Part 6, The Traveler, Summer in the Field. The months between July and October were spent by Kensett traveling and sketching. These excursions were also a way of visiting friends and family. He painted the North Shore of Boston while visiting his friend Thomas Gold Appleton. Lake Canasis in the Finger Lakes region was painted while at his friend and patron's Robert Oliphant's summer home. The scenes of Ithaca's Falls in New York State were done while visiting his sister Sarah. The paintings of the Shrewsbury River in New Jersey were done from the Parmalee home. In 1851, a painting he created of Mount Washington while on a trip to the White Mountains with his friend Champney was reproduced as an engraved print by the American Art Union, an organization established to promote American artists and distributed to nearly 19,000 members. Kensett traveled out west on several occasions. In 1854, he sailed from St. Louis up the Missouri River with a fur trader. He took a trip from Illinois up the Mississippi River to Minnesota with a group of politicians and writers and former President Fillmore in 1856. Two years later, Kensett and other artists were invited to a sketching excursion on the B&O Railroad from Baltimore, Maryland to Wheeling, West Virginia. 
In 1866 and 1870, along with fellow artists and friends, Sanford Gifford and Worthington Whitridge, he traveled to Colorado. There are three sites for which Kensett is probably best known. There is the popular tourist attraction of Lake George in the Adirondacks of upstate New York. The summer retreat of wealthy Americans on the Newport, Rhode Island seacoast. And lastly, the world-renowned natural wonder known as Niagara Falls in western New York State. Although he painted mountains, rivers, forests, and lakes, he is equally remembered for his multiple representations of various waterfalls in New York State and Massachusetts the Hudson River, and the Catskill Mountains, and the North Shore of Boston, especially the areas of Nahant, Beverly, and Manchester-on-the-Sea, Massachusetts. Part 7, Man of Property, Darien, Connecticut. In 1867, Kensett visited Darien, Connecticut with his friend and fellow artist, Vincent Collier. Both men purchased land on an island known today as Contentment Island. Kensett often stayed with the Colliers at their home. He painted many views of the area around Darien and of Long Island Sound. Possibly, his most famous artworks were painted there in 1872 during the summer before his death and later coined as the last summer's work. They can be seen at the Metropolitan Museum of Art and other museums and are for the most part in the style of painting today called Luminism. Characteristics of luminism include, most importantly, the effect of light on objects and little or no visible brush strokes. Several other artists were part of this style, namely Sanford Gifford, Jasper Cropsey, Fitzhugh Lane, George Caleb Bingham, and Martin Johnson Heed. In October 1872, while staying on Contentment Island with the Colliers, there was an accident. Mrs. Collier, who was driving a horse and buggy, fell off a causeway into rising tidal water. There are two versions of what happened next. One story has Kensett entering the cold water to save Mrs. Collier's life, while another has him retrieving her already lifeless body. He contracted pneumonia and after a lengthy illness, died in his New York studio on December 14, 1872, at the age of 56. In conclusion, this is an unfinished image where only the sunset has been painted in. It is a canvas full of potential. How would Kensett have finished it? Would he have added a boat providing a suggestion of humanity? Or would he have just included a rolling green sea? With this last image, we can only wonder where this more minimalist style of painting would have taken Kensett and his art. What we do know is that his father's prophecy was correct. He did become an artist of renown. <laughs>